Hello! <laughs> so today I'm going to be making a video on a different type of product than what I would usually make videos on. Because today I'm going to be making a huge upgrade to the file storage on my home network. Now normally I build my own file storage solutions like I have with Arnebia, my current file server. But when Asus Tor reached out and asked if I wanted to take a look at this NAS, I thought why not? And now Arnebia has a friend! <laughs> Yay! So what I'm looking to do is to keep our Nebia going, but instead of relying on cold storage for my regular backups, use this instead. As a sort of fault for all my important files, but also just for storing non-critical files like TV shows and movies too. It's going in my bedroom, so it needs to be small and it needs to be quiet, and it looks like this will meet my needs. Like it's so tiny and cute! <laughs> So in the box, as well as the AS 404T itself, you also get a little box of accessories, including two CAT 5E cables for gigabit connectivity, and a single CAT 6A cable for 10 gigabit connectivity. So on this little cutesy unit, we've got the power button, a whole bunch of activity LEDs, a configurable one-touch backup button, and a USB 3.1 port. The rear of the unit has a second USB 3.1 port, the 10 gigabit and 2 gigabit ethernet ports, the power input, and you can see the 120 millimeter exhaust fan. So the airflow is supposed to intake from the front and from the bottom, and there's a small gap for airflow in between the magnetic cover and the front of the unit. But there's no dust filtration anywhere, so it will be interesting to see if dust becomes an issue over time. But yeah, so the front cover is magnetic and comes off to reveal the four hot swap bays. So the AS440 uses a Marvel Armada 7020 1.6GHz dual-core processor and 2GB of non-upgradable DDR4 memory. So given that this has 10 gigabit networking, the CPU and memory are definitely going to be the limiting factor when it comes to performance. Now, before I set the NAS up, I need to make an upgrade to my workstation Lotus, this upgrade being in the form of a 10 gigabit Acer Tor network card. As nothing in my home network right now is 10 gigabit, in order to test NAS, what I'm going to be doing is connecting it to the router using 1 gigabit, and then creating a direct 10 gigabit link to this workstation. My plan is to upgrade everything to 10 gigabit over the next few years, but honestly, 10 gigabit networking is one of those things that if you try to do just all in one go, then the cost can be very hard to justify, especially at the home user level. So if I'm not able to get parts in to make videos on, my plan will be just to make sure that everything I buy from now on is 10 gigabit, and then just slowly over time the network will transition itself over. So the AS440 is now all wired in my bedroom on top of my chest of drawers. This may not be its exact final home, but this is the easiest place in here to film, so I'm going with it for now. So the last step before I can turn it on is to install the hard drives, and this is where Seagate comes in. For this NAS setup, Seagate have supplied four of their 14 terabyte IronWolf Pro drives, giving me a total of 56 terabytes of capacity to work with, which is just a completely crazy amount of storage for me, and means that this tiny NAS will have over double the capacity of my much larger file server. These drives are basically over-engineered what I'm going to be doing with them. They're rated for 24-7, multi-user, heavy workload rates, and up to 24 base systems. So I'm very confident that they'll do just fine in a random YouTuber's bedroom like mine. One thing is for sure though, I won't be running out of storage space anytime soon. So during the initial installation, I just had the NAS connected to my router using a 1 gigabit connection. And the setup process was very easy and straightforward. It downloaded and updated itself to the latest version, and then asked me if I wanted a one-click setup using the recommended settings, or if instead I wanted to use the advanced options, and I went with the advanced options. I decided to dub the Wolfsbane, you know, for the Iron Wolf drives, and created my account details. Next was date and time, and then network settings. And then I just had to decide how I wanted to configure the drives. Now normally I don't use RAID, and saying this usually causes some controversy, but for me having a backup was just always way more important than having redundancy, and I don't normally have enough drives to do both. Like backups protect you from data loss, whereas redundancy protects you from downtime, and to be completely honest with you, 
I having some downtime just wouldn't affect me all that much. Like I don't have employees or any anything mission critical since the video that I'm working on is always on the SSDs on my workstation. But this time is different. 56 terabytes is a huge leap forward in capacity for me. And given that I still have all my old hard drives available as well, I've gone with a RAID array this time. I chose RAID 5, which means the array can survive the failure of one drive. It also means my read speeds will be up to three times that of a single drive. So after deciding that and skipping registration and additional app downloads, as you know, I could do all that later, the OS was all set up and ready to go. The drives, however, well, they needed time to synchronize. And with 14 terabyte drives, this was not a fast process. It gave me an estimate time of 20 hours, but it actually took 22 and a half hours with slower transfer speeds towards the end. So now that that's done, let's take a look around. So up here we have some user settings, which includes your theme. And I'm just gonna switch this over to the green theme. You can also upload your own backgrounds and customize the text color if you want to. So next we have this little slide out tools menu, which gives you a quick and easy look at all the status of the NAS. Here we can see the system information, including the CPU temperature and fan speed, network information, event logs, the online users, and the health record of the NAS. Right now it's recommending that I configure some network security, some periodic hard drive bad block scans, and also set up a data backup solution, reminding you that RAID is not a backup. Activity Monitor is just like Task Manager in Windows. Storage Manager gives me all the information on my drives and on the RAID array. One nice feature is that Acetor and Seagate have worked together to include Iron Wolf Health Management. This will check for temperature, connection, vibration or physical shock related issues, as well as disk errors. And I can set this to scan my drives daily. You'll also get warranty and recovery service period information here, unlike me. Outside of that, there's also bad block scans, which will take forever on drives this large. And lastly, there's standard smart scans. And here you can also set up and configure iSCSI. Then there's the snapshot center. But for that, you need to have gone with a BTRFS file system instead of ext4 like I did when configuring your hard drive array. And then here's the settings menu. Now I'm not gonna go through everything in here because this video will be like an hour long. Um, but over here, you can customize the sign in page. Inside hardware, there's LED brightness control, and you can set up and schedule an LED light mode, which is a really great feature, but it's kind of wasted on me, seeing as I already have a modem, a router, and an RGB PC in my room, creating my very own Aurora Borealis to sleep to. Here, you can control disk hibernation and energy saving power management. And then finally, we've got fan control. Low is a near silent 540 RPM. Medium is an audible 1200 RPM and high is loud 1800 RPM. I find there's no difference between auto and low in my use case, so I just stick with auto, as that way I know it'll ramp up much higher if it needs to, so you know, I just leave it there. So here we have firewall settings. Here we have a mirror of the energy saving options that you can find from within the other menus, just so that they're easier to find. And then down here, we have quite a few options for connecting to your NAS from outside of the network. Here you can manage your accounts, where you can have up to 4,069 users with their own username, password, file permissions, restrictions, and storage quotas. Backup and Restore, an easy sync manager, is where you set up and perform all the different types of backup you could want to, from your PC to your NAS, from the NAS to another NAS, or external device, or even from the NAS to the cloud. One nice feature is the One Touch Backup button, this is a physical button on the front of the NAS, which allows you to quickly transfer data either to or from a USB device plugged into the front USB port. This means that I can quickly back up footage from my camera just by plugging the drive in and pressing a single button. External devices is where you'll see external drives, as well as printers. And you can also configure a compatible uninterruptible power supply, which I really need to get one because the power is just awful where I live. Um, but you can even connect an optical drive if you're a total loser. <laughs> services is where you can configure both Windows and Mac file services, as well as set up servers like an FTP server or a web server, or other servers and services that honestly I've never played with before in my life. And lastly, there's App Central, which has a ton of different apps that you can download that add functionality to your NAS. One great one is the Surveillance Center, 
This allows you to monitor and record up to four IP cameras directly on your NAS, with additional camera licenses available to purchase. You can also add a Plex media server, and for playing back content at source file quality, this NAS does completely fine, as expected. So I had one client playing a 720p file, another playing back a 1080p file, and a third playing back a 4K MP4 file, and this was all happening simultaneously, and everything played instantly without any buffering. However, playing back a 1080p H.265 movie on a single client resulted in buffering that made the movie unwatchable, and a 4K H.265 movie was of course even worse. This is really not the sort of processor that you want to be doing any transcoding on. It could do 720p down to 480p, just as an example, as of course none would actually do that, but it couldn't do anything more demanding than that. So nothing unexpected here given the specs, but I knew that someone would ask. So now it's finally time to test the file transfer speeds of this new NAS setup, and I thought that since I don't have any other units to compare this NAS to, I just stick to exactly what I'm going to use the NAS for in the real world, transferring video files. Starting with 1 gigabit tests. For read, I'm seeing around 113 megabytes per second. And with the right test, I'm also seeing around 112 megabytes per second. So moving across the 10 gigabit, and you can just see how that improves things. For read, I'm now seeing 360 megabytes per second, which is over three times as fast as being on one gigabit. For write speeds though, I'm more limited by the speed of the drives, but I'm still seeing around 190 megabytes per second, which far exceeds the capabilities of boring old gigabit. Whenever I talk about how slow gigabit is, there tends to be a lot of pushback and confusion. Maybe because of the difference between bits and bytes, or maybe I'm just missing something, because honestly, networking is not my forte. <laughs> um, but I hope you can see that even with hard drives, gigabit is a huge bottleneck, which is why I'm so pleased to see 2.5, 5 and 10 gigabit motherboards starting to become more of a thing this generation. So conclusion time, what do I think of the new NAS setup? Well, I think the AS440 is brilliant. Honestly, it's one of the cheapest NASs that comes with a connection faster than one gigabit. And you know, you can see just how much of a bottleneck gigabit is, even just for hard drives. With that said, I do think that Acertor's message here is a bit off. Whilst more than just storage is true, I think that where the strengths of the AS440 lie is actually in just adding no frills fast storage to your home network. If you want to do anything too fancy, I do think the lower end processor and memory could hold you back. But all in all, it's £340 in the UK, and for that I can easily recommend it, if it meets your needs. I normally build my own storage servers, but I personally think it'd be very difficult to compete with this NAS in terms of having a similar small form factor, including hot swap bays, energy efficiency, and having 10 gigabit networking at this price point. So whilst I'm not going to stop building my own systems, because it's fun, I do now have an appreciation for these pre-built solutions. So if you like this video, then please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell if you haven't already and you want to see more of my videos, or perhaps consider becoming a patron. And thank you for watching!